Hi, welcome to Sunil Maths Tutorial, Galvai's Theory, Class Number 4. In this video, we will learn Eisenstein Criterion, which helps us to find out the reducibility or irreducibility of the polynomial over the set of rational numbers. Let us see the statement. Let f of x is equals to a0 plus a1x plus and so on plus a n x power n belongs to z of x, where n greater than or equals to 1. If there is a prime number p satisfying this condition, p square does not divides a0, p divides a0, p divides a1 and so on, p divides a n minus 1, but p does not divides a n, then f of x is irreducible over capital Q. So this is the statement of Eisenstein criterion. Suppose f of x is a polynomial in the form f of x is equals to a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus and so on plus an x power n where n greater than or equals to 1 and this polynomial f of x belongs to z of x it means all the coefficients a0 a1 a2 and so on a n are integers suppose there is a prime number p there is a prime number p satisfying the following conditions p square does not divides a naught p divides a naught p divides a1 p divides a2 and so on p divides a n minus 1 but p does not divides a n if this condition satisfies then the polynomial f of x is irreducible then the polynomial f of x is irreducible over the field of rational numbers q this is the statement of Eisenstein criterion, one of the very very important statement which is very useful to check the reducibility and irreducibility over capital Q. So we prove this theorem now. So right, so let us take f of x is a polynomial in this way and p is a prime number satisfying this one. We have to prove that f of x is irreducible over Q. We have to prove that f of x is irreducible over q. Our aim is to show that we have to prove that f of x is irreducible over q. So assume the contradiction point. If possible, let f of x is reducible over q f of x is reducible over q our aim is to show that irreducible by we, we assume that it is reducible over q if it is reducible over q then then what it means right by the definition of reducibility f of x can be written as f of x can be written as product of product of two non-constant polynomials f of x can be written as product of two non-constant polynomials over capital Q that is f of x can be written as f of x can be written like this f of x is equals to b0 plus b1x plus b2x square plus and so on brx power r into into c0 plus c1x plus c2x square plus and so on csx power s csx power s where remember that both r comma s are positive integers and both r comma s are less than n both r comma s are less than n and remember that 
R plus S is equals to N. R plus S is equals to N. That is the condition. So see here. B of X can be written as product of two non-constant polynomials with B R and C S also not equals to zero. There is one more condition. So we write like this. R comma S belongs to Z plus S means they are not equals to zero. Yes. Now comparing the coefficients. Now comparing the coefficients on both sides. Comparing the coefficients of x comma x square and so on on both sides. If you compare the coefficients on both sides, you simply get a naught is equals to b naught into c naught and a1 is equals to b naught c1 plus b1 c naught. a2 is equals to b naught c2 plus b1 c1 plus b2 c naught. I think you understand the rhythm. Now in general, a m is equals to a m is equals to b naught into b naught into c m plus b one into b naught into c m plus b one into b b one into c m minus one plus b two into c m minus two plus and so on plus b m into c naught and obviously the last term a n is equals to b r into c s this is the constant term this is coefficient of x coefficient of x this is coefficient of x square and this is coefficient of x power n so in our theorem we have we have P divides A naught. In our theorem, we have the in the statement we have P divides A naught, and the A naught is equals to P divides B naught into C naught because A naught is equals to B naught into C naught. This condition implies as either P divides B naught or P divides C naught. So let us take case one. Case one. In this case, we assume that. In this case, we assume that. P divides a C naught, but P does not divides B naught. Let us take. Let us take. In our theorem, we have P divides A naught, and A naught is equals to B naught into C naught. So it means P divides B naught into C naught. It means P divides B naught or P divides C naught. P divides either B naught or C naught. Let us take. Case one. Let us take. Let us take. P divides. P divides. C naught. P divides C naught. But P does not divides B naught. We assume that. Just we are taking. This is our assumption. Now choose another constant C m. Let us choose a constant. Let us choose a constant or coefficient C m be the first coefficient. First coefficient in C naught plus C one x plus C two x square plus and so on plus C s x power s such that P does not divides C m. P does not divides C m. We assume that. P does not divides C M, where remember that this is the first coefficient and S is the highest coefficient. There, this M is less than S. This M is less than S. Now you observe that P does not divides C M, P does not divides B naught. If P does not divides C M and P does not divides C naught, then P does not divides C M into B naught, and this C M into B naught, this C M into B naught. Is one of the coefficient in A M, one of the coefficient in A M. So we conclude that P does not divides A M. P does not divides A M. If P does not divides, if P does not divides A M, in our theorem already we have P does not divides A N. This implies as, this implies as 
m is equals to n and also we have m less than s it means n less than s but already we have s less than n this is a contradiction this is a contradiction this contradiction exists because of our assumption it is irredu it is reducible over capital q so in a similar manner here we take we take p divides c not but p does not divides b not let us take in a similar manner in a similar manner suppose case 2 case 2 suppose p divides b not but p does not divide c not let us take bm be the first coefficient bm be the first coefficient in the polynomial b not plus b1x plus and so on br x power r such that p does not divides p does not divides bm so here also that m is less than r that m is less than r p does not divides m bm p does not divides c not obviously p does not divides bm into c not this implies as p does not divides am already we have p does not divides an which implies as n is equals to m uh, and this m is less than r which implies as n less than r but actually what is right r is less than n r is less than n so this is a contradiction again this point n less than r is contradiction n less than r is contradiction wrong this term is this implication is contradiction this contradiction exists because of every time we our assumption the polynomial is reducible hence we conclude that our assumption f of x is reducible over q is wrong f of x is irreducible over q this completes the proof of the theorem so remember that this is one of the very very important theorem in galois theory so by had the statement i repeat the statement observe that f of x is a polynomial in this form a naught plus a one x plus a two x square plus and so on plus a n x power n where n greater than or equals to one and f of x belongs to z of x it means the coefficients a naught a one a two and so on a n belongs to z then if there is a prime number p satisfying these conditions p square does not divides a naught p divides a naught p divides a one and so on p divides a two p divides a n minus 1 but p does not divides a n then we have to prove that f of x is irreducible over q f of x is irreducible over q we have to prove that means the polynomial f of x is irreducible over the set of rational numbers so by had the statement to understand this theorem we solve one example let us take f of x is equals to x square minus 2 let us take f of x is equals to x square minus 2 now compare this polynomial comparing this polynomial with a naught plus a one x plus a two x square what we get a naught is equals to minus 2 a one is equals to 0 a2 is equals to 1 choose the prime number choose the prime number p is equals to 2 we are choosing prime number p is equals to 2 obviously 2 divides minus 2 it means p divides a naught 2 divides 0 which implies p divides a1 2 does not divides 1 which implies p does not divides a2 and also 2 square does not divides a naught which means p square does not divides a naught it means these conditions implies as what it means there is a prime number p satisfying satisfying eisenstein criterion eisenstein criterion this shows us 
there is a prime number p satisfying the properties of Eisenstein criterion. Then the polynomial f of x is equals to x square minus 2 is irreducible, is irreducible over capital Q. Is irreducible over capital Q. Actually, you observe that the polynomial x square minus 2 can be split like this x plus root 2 into x minus root 2. It means it is the product of two non constant polynomials, but this root 2 and minus root 2 are irrational numbers. Are irrational numbers. It means this polynomial has roots. The, pol the roots of this polynomial are irrational. So they are not rational. So the polynomial is irreducible over Q by choosing the prime number P is equals to 2. This is one of the example to understand the Einstein criterion. In the next video, we learn some more examples depends upon the Einstein criterion. Keep learning. Wish you all the best.